Well, tonight at 10, a weather alert will have your COVID-19 coverage in just a moment. But first, strong storms rolling through the area this evening. Let's check in with Chief Meteorologist Cameron Hoppin with your 44 forecast. Hey, Cameron. Hey, Mac. Yeah, you know, a lot of those showers and storms, at least the worst of them, beginning to subside. What we've dealt with over the last few hours, significant shower, thunderstorm activity, large hail, but most importantly, the damaging straight line wind threat. I'm going to throw this map in motion here, and what you're going to see is a line of showers and storms rolling southeastward. You can even see the gust front along the leading edge of that, showing where winds up to around 50 miles per hour were projected out from the leading edge of that storm. Now, as of right now, what we're looking at throughout the region is more or less the majority of that threat of severe weather subsiding and passing off to the east of us. And notice, on top of all of that, still looking at some areas of heavy rainfall. We also, on top of it all, in addition to the large hail threat and the winds of around 50 miles per hour, check this out. Out in Lawrence County, we saw wind gusts of 70 plus miles per hour out towards Vincennes as well. Multiple reports of trees down, structural damage up across the far northern reaches of the region. Again, an active night throughout the tri state, but as these showers and storms subside, we eventually look at cooler, calmer conditions throughout the tri-state. I'll let you know how long those are expected to last coming up. Tonight at 10, there's tragedy across America with more people dying of COVID-19 every day. Davies County, Indiana, reporting their first death tonight. More than 14,000 Americans have died since the pandemic first broke out, and that number is expected to spike in the coming weeks. In Indiana, local positive cases moving to the triple digits, with 45 confirmed in Vandenberg County. The Davies County Health Department says people may have been exposed to one of the local gas stations there, as more than 6,000 Hoosiers have tested positive across the state. In Kentucky, cases passing 1,300 tonight, with the biggest jump in confirmed cases in the last 24 hours. Hours. An update from Owensboro in just a moment. In Illinois, they've reached 15,000, with Saline County confirming their third this week. And even though some parts of the tri state aren't feeling that surge just yet, officials are urging everyone to stay home and keep a safe distance from groups to help flatten that curve. Aaron Huber has been covering this pandemic since it first hit the area. He joins us tonight in the studio with more. Aaron. Traditionally Mac, as tri-state leaders take a closer look at conditions in their state for the spread of COVID-19, there are some new measures in place tonight to help turn the tide. Tonight, more executive orders from Governor Bashir meant to enforce social distancing. It does limit uh, in-store to the life-sustaining businesses that we've left open to one person per household. This as Kentucky cases of COVID-19 continue to climb. A health care system already stretched thin with cases of COVID-19 on top of other medical needs is pulled even tighter as eight Owensboro health workers now have coronavirus themselves. Back in the Hoosier state, Governor Holcomb continues to stress the seriousness of the situation. I am not crying wolf. This is, um, we see the numbers, you hear the numbers, we report, we're very transparent about the lay of the land. Um, we, we watch what's happening to our east and to our west. And among those numbers, Davies County's first death from coronavirus. And health officials tonight are on alert for another uptick in cases there. After a person confirmed positive with COVID-19 visited a gas station in Odin last Friday afternoon. As Hoosiers across the state take new measures for their own safety and for the safety of those around them. We are concerned since where we're currently staying right now has people that are at higher risk. Since we're supposed to leave the medical professionals with the medical grade ones. We just went over to the grocery, bought some fabric, and stitched together some masks. But the impact across Indiana goes beyond simple social distancing. Today, Toyota of Princeton announced that they aren't expected to open their major manufacturing plant until May the 4th. Aaron Huber, 44 News. Kentucky is certainly affected by this looming pandemic as it gains ground across the region. Places like Muhlenberg and Hopkins County even putting curfews in place to help stop the spread. With more than 70 cases in Davis County, Kentucky, people are staying home and limiting their social interaction. And joining me now is Dr. Michael Kelly with Owensboro Health. Now, we are learning tonight that more employees there are testing positive for COVID-19. Can you tell me about these latest developments? Sure. Um, so here at Owensboro Health, we have about 4,500 employees throughout the system. And within the last couple of days, uh, not an unexpected event, uh, eight of those employees have turned positive. Uh, all of them are home under self-isolation and doing well. 
And Dr. Kelly, do you feel like medical workers in your area are making headway in curbing the spread, or do you expect the coronavirus to spike in the coming days, even weeks? Yeah, so everybody's seeing all these different models out there and where we're at, and we are preparing for a surge. We think we are probably not there, and we do expect to see more cases. The timing of that, uh, how many that is, over what period of time are dependent on a lot of factors. Those factors include all the social distancing and things that we've asked people to do, uh, the hand hygiene, uh, the staying at home, the not getting together and, and hanging out phenomenon here. So I think that some of how many cases we see will be dependent upon how well we're doing with that. Uh, the size of a peak or a surge of cases would be much better dealt with over time and in lower numbers uh, than all at once. You never want to overwhelm a system and have uh, not enough beds or ventilators or other resources as you're seeing in other parts of the country, uh, which is where you run into a problem here. Uh, we're in a good position right now with all of those things. We have a surge plan in place of how to deal with that. We are partnering with other uh, hospitals in the area to talk about how we can best serve each other's needs. Uh, and we're working on that all day, every day. And other places in Kentucky have a curfew in place. Do you think that that would work in Owensboro? Um, I think I would leave that to, to local leadership and, and in line with the governor and, and, and all of that. I think that people need to do the right thing. Uh, and I think the information's out there about what they need to do. Uh, they need to model the way for everybody else, and that's what we're trying to do here. And do you feel like medical workers in Owensboro have the resources they need to handle this problem? I know you mentioned that uh, you feel like you're prepared at this point. Is there anything that you need there in Owensboro right now? Um, I think the community support has been fantastic. Uh, we really appreciate that. I want to get that out there first. We're in a good position now through our supply chain, our personal protective equipment. Um, you know, there are some things that uh, we're, you know, we get a lot of orders of things that are coming and you're hearing these stories out there. Uh, that maybe we thought should have been here yesterday and we're still waiting for. We are a little bit uh, troubled by some of that, but we are doing well. We still have a little bit of time here to get this stuff and things are coming in in, in a nice fashion for us. Um, we are um, happy with the progress that we've made uh, and we're going to just look at all the positive things right now. All right, Dr. Kelly, thanks so much for your time. We appreciate everything you're doing to stop the spread right now. And please stay with 44 News on air and online as we continue to watch this pandemic as it grows across the region. You can also follow us on social media or download the 44 News app to your smartphone or tablet. Hospitals across the tri-state are putting non-urgent medical procedures on hold, making these trying times even tougher for families. A Kentucky family says it took them more than a week to get their father into hospice care, and they say he didn't have the resources to make him comfortable before he passed. Joylin Bukovac shares this emotional story. It's a love story rivaling those told in movies. Mom and Dad are the most, we're the most passionate, loving couple that I've ever known. With a bittersweet earthly ending. It reminded me of Notebook. At, at one point one night, I thought they were both going to go because she was so broken hearted. Richard Finley took his last breath Sunday night. And the whole time dad's laying there and in pain and my mom just was with him constantly and patting him and talking to him and telling him their love stories over and him and saying, I love you, you're my man, and I've never loved anybody but you. He passed away surrounded by his loved ones, and even though the funeral has to be postponed, his wife is still honoring his life. She said, we're going to wait till this virus is over, and then we're going to have a big family reunion. And she said, but I'm going to keep Dickie right here on this altar. We're going to create an altar with pictures and flowers, a candle, and I'm going to keep this, she said, because I'm just too lonesome without him. Not only is the coronavirus pandemic getting in the way of funeral plans, but it's also bringing in additional challenges for loved ones saying goodbye. This is wrong. This is immoral. Richard and Dorothy Finley's daughter says it took more than five days to get her father into hospice. He was without the supplies he needed to stay comfortable for several days, his needs seemingly slipping through the cracks, since his family could not stay with them if he was taken to the ER. This man is screaming in pain now all night long with my mother having to hear it and us soothing him as best we can with no pain medication. And just when Wolf thought all hope was lost. And I got on my knees in the bedroom and I said, God, help me, help my dad, my mom, they don't deserve this. And 
I just heard this voice in my head and said, use the internet. Come, Facebook. She knew it would take the power in numbers to finally get what they needed. We asked for help. And we got it. It was awfully late to get it, but we got it. Caregivers all over the world were offering to drop everything to help. So we went from nobody being willing to help. To angels showing up everywhere, with starting with Peggy. Peggy brought this Facebook post to Western Kentucky Hospice's attention, and they sent help right away. Finley ultimately did not get his way. He did not want to enter the gates of heaven without his beloved wife by his side. She said, um, you know, I love you more than anything, but I don't want you to suffer anymore. Please go. And five minutes later, he was gone. His wife knowing they'll soon be reunited. Draylene Bukovac, 44 News. The CDC announces new measures to help essential workers avoid the coronavirus. There's a new plan to reduce the impact for business owners and critical services in desperate need of workers. Now, workers on the front lines, like doctors and nurses, say it's a scary problem, but they'll continue working as long as they're healthy. The CDC is reviewing a new proposal to have workers get their temperature checked twice every day while wearing a mask. I continue to come to work during this global pandemic because this is my calling. It's always having that fear. You never really know what you're going into. Um, you know, you get your dispatch and you get your call information, but you know, sometimes there's so much more information that we don't know. And if exposed, essential workers are required to self-isolate for at least two weeks. Vanderburg County is under a travel watch. That means you shouldn't be driving around unless it's essential. Vanderburg County is currently the only spot in the tri-state under a travel watch, but several other areas in Indiana have a similar measure in place. The Evansville Vanderburg County Emergency Management Team made the announcement this week, and that means you should only be driving if it's for work or an emergency. Law enforcement does not want to get in practice of stopping people randomly to question why you're out. Because some people need to be out going to the store, picking up medication, checking on the elderly, just buying essential things. And we don't want to try to police everybody outside of their homes. And Sheriff Wedding says the travel watch remains in effect until April 20th. And please stay with 44 News on air and online as we continue to watch this pandemic as it grows across the region. You can also follow us on social media or download the 44 News app to your smartphone or tablet. Tonight on 44 News at 10, Senator Bernie Sanders dropping out of the race for president. A closer look at the 2020 election when we come back.